and welcome back so back in video 72 um i did show a project where i had a dual pwm for my setup at work so there's a fan on one side a mouse house a heated mouse house on the other and an arduino in the middle and it all worked very well and you can have a look at that video it's quite an interesting little project i do use it pretty much every day definitely every day in the winter um, less so in the spring and then definitely again in the summer so it works pretty well now the thing is i've got a, an identical fan this one here it's a little tiny desk fan usb 5 volt and they work really well and they're really cheap as well i might add but they they work well but at full power they're just that tad too noisy they just, just start to it's, it's the blow of the air you know they start to annoy a little bit so i thought right i'm going to have to build some kind of pwm for this and get just take off the edge you know a little bit and then i saw this unit marked on ebay it just happened to come up i don't know i think ebay's tracking me or something so every time i go onto ebay it knows exactly what i've bought before so this is a little pwm unit as you can say uh, see it's got um power in motor out in fact it says that here we are so you got power in motor out okay so two connectors and they're nicely on a on a screw connector at the back here comes with this knob and backing washer and nuts so that can fit onto something and be screwed up and in fact this little knob thing is you know, has a switch on it so you can switch the thing right off as it is now and then turn it on and wind it up so that's great so um did it work well yes and no um it is now of course so let's let's plug this in to my fan unit here and see what it's like so on minimum as it is now it's not quite enough to start it up you might if i turn it off and then back on again you might see it just sort of judder a little bit oh, just a fraction it's probably too little for the camera but if i just turn it up a little bit now off it goes now that's quite a nice gentle breeze and well it might be all i need you see and you can turn it all the way up to maximum that's brilliant and if i turn it all the way down now it doesn't stall until the power is removed so you get a just a trickler there now this is exactly what i needed um, just so i can take it down to about there so that marking is there and that's probably enough and the noise level is nice and low as well so i thought great that's going to save me an arduino and all the mucking about that goes in, into that but then i discovered when I first got it the actual range of movement that I needed was probably from full power to about there and that was it any lower than that and the thing would stop so I put it on the scope and what I could actually see were some very short pulses now the the distance between the pulses that is to say the frequency is amended by this but obviously it was just not enough for that particular fan maybe it would work for other things maybe it wouldn't so what i've actually done is just modify this and it's a bit of a hack but i've used this hack before actually i've put a 2.2k resistor between the wiper and the well the hot end if you like the end it wants to go to to go to full power now that has a very odd effect on what happens on this variable resistor if you could plot it um, so let me just show you a quick diagram of what i've actually done right so if you've got um the variable resistor it's probably something like that so that's the hot end and that's well potentially ground but it might not be depending on how they design this uh, what i've actually done is from here to here i've got my 2k2 resistor now this is a 10k so as you can see the minimum this is ever going to be is 2.2 and it runs in parallel with whatever resistance you've got left here depending on where the slider the slider i keep saying slider wiper where the wiper is so it actually goes to below, down below 2.2k um well at all times because you've always got some variable resistance here haven't you um well if you could graph that i don't know what it would look like but it would certainly look a little bit odd but i've seen this used before i mean i've used this sort of hack for years and years for audio stuff and whatnot and i just on a hunch really i tried it and lo and behold it works like a dream now i didn't just choose 2k2 out of the box you know i uh, put a variable resistor in there first i think i put a 
it might have been a 50k or 100k and then just turned it until I got the results that I wanted and it happened to be a very low resistance 2.2 but as you can see it works like a dream now so I can take it down to minimum and that still runs but very very gently in fact you'd, you'd hardly get any breeze from that at all but it's just enough to turn it over and halfway yeah that's that's not bad and then full power well full power is full power I put that on the scope actually so let's have a look at the um, the waveform that's generated now out of this device to the motor it's a 555 driven one actually so a timer so let's have a look at the the waveform that's generated and you'll see it um, working like a dream so this is pretty much at the minimum setting now and you can see the frequency down there it says 400 kilohertz which well I'd be surprised at but you never know do you now if I turn the power up so the fan is now getting more power you can see the actual pulse well before it disappears off the scope there um, actually gets much much wider let me press the uh, auto again to get that back so there it is Now this is a five volt pulse, so it's quite big. Now look at the frequency, it says 324 kilohertz. I, I wouldn't think that's true really, but what you can see, as I move it backwards and forwards like this, look, the pulses get closer together rather than the mark space ratio actually moving. So it seems like the frequency is being changed here rather than the mark space ratio, which is slightly interesting, but well, it does work. So there we are good okay back to the main video right so i hope you found that interesting just shows you what you can do if you get something that isn't quite right you can you know sometimes at least adjust it something great that's it then right blue tech out of the way which brings us on rather nicely to this little tiny product now as you can see from the packaging it says it's a nano version 3 but it's a mega 168 not a 328 as we've come to use in say the arduino uno so what's the difference between the Mega 168? You can see here it's still 16 megahertz and it's 5 volts. And uh, when we get out of the packet in a minute, you'll see it's the same size as the standard Nano. So what's the difference? Well, let's have a look at the comparison sheet then that I happen to have knocked up here. Right, so here we have a comparison between the Nano, the two Nanos in fact, and an Uno. So the 168 versus the 328p which is exactly the same as the one that's in the uno of course so they both run at 16 megahertz still got eight analog and uh, eight analog outputs and 14 digital including six pwm but the only difference here is look the 168 has only got half a k of eprom now of course eprom isn't really used an awful lot in any of the uh, sketches i've ever seen so whether it's half a k or 1k probably not a huge difference what is a huge difference though is the difference between 1k and 2k SRAM that's the space where your program runs and the standard nano this one down the bottom is exactly the same as the uno of course that's 2k and also the flash is cut in half on a 168 the 168 has only 16 kb not 32 whereas the uno is the same as the nano 328 um, the USB socket is a mini on both of the nanos and it's a standard full size on the Uno unless we're using a clone. I notice most of the clone Unos do have a mini or even a micro in fact these days and there's one UART that's the uh, serial input output. Now is this actually going to make any difference? Well of course if you've got a huge big program yes it will make a difference because you can only fit 16k in. Um, and when you run it you've only got a K in which to run everything that's all your variables and stuff like that but I'm thinking do you know what for the price maybe we should be considering this a bit more I mean let's just have a look how much I got these for now I bought two of these look and 158 a piece I bought two pieces £3.16 and I got free shipping now the bad news is I couldn't actually find these at that price with free shipping not unless you bought a lot of them but this is because I'm just looking on AliExpress I mean you've got Banggood, Gearbest there's a couple of other 
Far Eastern sites, I can't remember off the top of my head. And of course, you've got eBay as well. But if you did buy them from uh, AliExpress, for example, here. So if we scroll down, now if you were to buy 10 of them, you get them for 155 with free shipping. So 155 as opposed to, now what's 155 in dollars? It's probably about, what, 170, 180, something like that. As opposed to, well, a standard nano would probably cost you about two pounds thirty. So, what's that? That's that's I know two sixty or something in dollars. So difficult to convert in my head. Um, and of course, the Uno you can probably get for about three or four pounds a full size Uno board. So I'm thinking, all right. So these are cheap, you know, a pound difference. And why wouldn't you, is the question. Why wouldn't you use one of these if your needs are modest? For example, the fridge alarm that I created a few months back, that could probably run on these. And not just that, the um, the project that's still sitting on the back of my workbench, because I haven't yet done anything with it, and I'm still waiting for stuff to arrive, this LED matrix, for example, with the, um, the four-in-ones. Could this run with one of these, or would it run out of memory? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? It's to unpack this, solder in the headers, and stick it into my little development board, which looks like this. There's my Nano stuck into this development board, so that's the Nano on top. I'm going to um, solder all this up, put the headers on, stick it in here, program it, and see if it falls over flat on its face or whether it actually runs. Let's try it. And back from the hot soldering iron, I've now Put the um, header pins on it. Not quite straight, I've noticed. Oh well, that's what happens when you rush it, see? <laughs> Shouldn't rush it, should have taken my time. Anyway, um, I've soldered these on. Um, let's take the original one out then. So this is a 328, that's a, a 168. So this one just, oh, there we are, comes out of there. Now, you can see straight away actually, there are some physical differences. Um, the 328 process of the one in this hand is, is actually bigger look than the 168 over here. Um, also, the voltage regulator on this one is tucked underneath, along with the USB to serial converter, and yet on this one, the voltage regulator is here, and the USB to serial converter is here. Um, I believe that's still a CH340G, is it? Let's one catch the light on it. Ooh, difficult to see, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to have to... Yeah, there we are. You can just make it out. Look, just, if you've got very good eyes. Okay, so anyway, it's the same chip. And uh, the only difference is, in fact, is the processor. But the fact that the processor is smaller on there compared to this one means they've shoved everything on top uh, to leave a nice clean underneath which in some ways i think works better doesn't it? all these bits on the bottom because they stop you mounting this board flush on something when you screw it down whereas this one is nice and flat hmm pity they didn't manage that with the uh, the new version but there we are still got the usb mini connector not the micro but that's no hardship for me as long as it's got one i don't mind to be quite honest and there's the reset button of course in the middle a little bit more difficult to push than this one, I must say. This is a, an oblong one. Yeah, oh, it's still quite difficult. Okay, well, anyway, the time's come to test it now. I'm going to plug this into this development board, upload the code, and we'll see what happens. It's either going to work or it's not, simple as that. And the only worry that I have is that this particular sketch for this particular um, matrix here puts a lot of these characters into EEPROM, the very thing this doesn't have very much of, half the amount, only has 1K. So will it fit? That's the thing, isn't it? Will it fit program and EEPROM in here? Well, we'll find out in about 30 seconds. Right, it's uploading now, as we can see, and, oh dear. Oh, hang on, hey, look at that. Let me put the, um, the red acetate over the LEDs so we can read them. Well, there we are. Proof indeed that the 168 with its half amount of memory and so forth works beautifully well, even for this project, which I was worried about, I must admit, with that um, EEPROM being used. And, well, the program itself isn't huge, but, uh, you know, you never know. There's my little PIR turning it off. 
So there we are. So you can use a 168, that's a Nano 168, for projects that just aren't that demanding. And to be quite honest, although the Arduino.cc people seem to think that the Arduino Uno is the one to start with for beginners, and you know, I won't disagree, but we'll say that once you've had the Uno and you see how physically big it is, I mean, it's as big as this, isn't it? But without the advantage of all these um, pins and things. Remember, each one of these has got plus, minus, and the signal for the pin that you're talking about, and that can be very, very useful sometimes. Um, I'd say this development board with the Nano is actually a better bet for beginners, but there we are. Horses for courses, as they say. But anyway, 168, um, half the price, half the memory, half the EEPROM memory, but, well, for this project, which I was a little bit worried about, it works absolutely fine, look, no trouble at all. So there we are, for less than half the price of a cup of coffee, you've got a, a microcontroller that does the biz. And I suppose if you start with these, and then you do find that your program is a little bit too big, or you just need more space, basically, well, swap it out then for a, a full-size 328 Nano. And, uh, well, you've not really lost anything then, have you? Great. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. I um, hope this is useful to you, and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.